Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're going to study uh, nicotine and its interaction with the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Okay, and this is a video within the uh, playlist on the cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels, of which uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are an example. Okay, right. So, we are going to study nicotine, and the structure of this video uh, is we're going to start with a discussion of the chemical structure of nicotine. We're then going to talk about the different types of nicotinic acetylcholine receptor and the fact that nicotine is an agonist at these receptors. We're then going to talk about why uh, nicotine um, does not bind and agonize uh, the skeletal muscle isoforms of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, and that's very, very important, uh, because if it did, it would probably cause um, very, um, it would cause involuntary muscle contractions, and it would probably be fatal, because it would probably lead to spastic paralysis, and it would stop you breathing. Okay, uh, then what we're going to talk about is uh, why nicotine actually uh, is addictive. We're going to talk about the mesolimbic dopamine system and how nicotine will activate that system to uh, trigger positive reinforcement of the uh, behaviour which is smoking or uh, taking nicotine in whatever way uh, that uh, you do. Right, okay, so we'll start uh, with the structure of nicotine. Now, before I can tell you the structure of nicotine, I'm going to firstly uh, tell you the structures of some related compounds that are kind of like uh, slightly simpler structures that build up to the structure of nicotine. So we'll start with the structure of a pyridine ring. Okay, so a pyridine ring is going to come first. Now, pyridine rings are six-membered rings, okay, where five of the members are carbon atoms, and then one of the members of the ring is a nitrogen. So let me show you this. Here are three carbons. Here's the nitrogen, and here are two more carbons. So we have five carbons with a nitrogen there. So this is a six-membered ring, five carbons, one nitrogen. And basically, pyridine rings have alternating double and single bonds, like so, just like a benzene structure. So they are aromatic rings where, uh, unlike benzene, one of the elements is now nitrogen. Okay, and then off all of these carbons, you then have hydrogens. But you don't need a hydrogen off that nitrogen atom, because the nitrogen atom only needs three bonds, and it's already got all three of those. So this now is the structure of the pyrimidine ring. If we were to draw its um, skeletal structure, which is slightly simpler, because you don't have to show the actual carbon atoms, you just show them as corners, then the structure becomes very simple. You also don't have to show hydrogen atoms coming off carbon, so instead it just reduces down to this structure here. So this is the simpler skeletal structure of the pyrimidine ring. Okay, and basically uh, nicotine is going to have a, sorry, not a pyrimidine, a pyridine ring. Nicotine is going to have a pyridine ring uh, within its structure. A pyrimidine ring is something different. So this is not, I repeat, is not equal to a pyrimidine ring. It's a pyridine ring. Okay, the pyrimidine ring is what you have in uh, the DNA organic bases, and um, basically it has two nitrogens in this aromatic ring. It has one here and one here, okay? So this is not a pyrimidine ring, it's a pyridine ring. Okay, right, so now let's use our pyridine ring to build our next compound. Now our next compound is a molecule known as niacin. Okay, which is actually the vitamin B3. So niacin or vitamin B3, these are both names that you will um, hear uh, this molecule referred to as. Okay, and basically what you do is you take the pyridine ring, so I will stick to drawing the skeletal structure because it's simpler now. So here's this six-membered ring where five of the members are carbons and then this sixth member here is a nitrogen. And then you have alternating double and single bonds, so double bonds here. And then finally, off here, you'll have a carboxylic acid group. So let me put this on. So here's your carboxylic acid group off the pyr pyridine ring. Okay, so that now is the structure of niacin. So you put a carboxylic acid group off this uh, third member of the ring because the nitrogen would be called the first member of the ring. 
then you go round two, three, four, five, and six. So you put a carboxylic acid group off this third member of the ring, and that gives you niacin or vitamin B3. Now we'll go on a little bit further. So we've gone up a level of complexity. Now we'll go up another level of complexity to nicotinamide. Okay, so we're getting closer, certainly in names, uh, to nicotine. Again, this is the last step before we actually get to the structure of nicotine. So this is nicotinamide. Okay, so the structure of nicotinamide is you take niacin or vitamin B3 and basically you take this alcohol group off the carboxylic acid group and instead you put an amine group there to create overall the primary amide. Okay, so here's your six-membered ring here. Okay, drawn slightly oddly, uh, but never mind. Okay, so here are the double bonds. One, two, three. And then off here now, instead of having a normal carboxylic acid group, instead you're now going to have a primary amide group. So you're still going to have the carbonyl group there, but instead of having that alcohol group, you'll have an amino group. So this is an amide. This is a primary amide group. Let me get some color on here. Okay, so this group circled in red here. Okay, this is a primary amide group. This is primary amide. Okay, so this whole structure now is nicotinamide. Right, and then finally we go to nicotine, which is another modification to nicotinamide. Nicotine. So nicotine has a little bit more of a complicated structure. So, what you're going to do basically is you're going to take this carbonyl group completely off now. So let me show you this. You'll still have your pyridine ring here. So you'll still have this uh, six-membered ring where one of the members down here is a nitrogen. Okay, and the other four members are carbons. And you've got your alternating double and single bonds here. Then you've got your carbon up there and you've taken this carbonyl group off now. So instead what you're going to do is you're going to bind this carbon here to another carbon, okay, and then this carbon is going to be linked again to another carbon, which will go to another carbon, and basically you're going to form a five-membered ring, and the nitrogen will still be here, okay. So, if we look at the nicotinamide, remember we've got this amine group here, we're going to take one of the hydrogens off that um, amine group here, so we're going to take one of these off, and we're going to bind it instead to this carbon here, okay, to form this ring structure. Oh, and by the way, you do not have a hydrogen coming off there. You have a methyl group coming off there, so let me get rid of that. Okay, uh, so overall what you're going to do is you're going to remove this carbonyl group here, and you're going to put in this these three carbons here, these three methylene groups instead, and they are going to link this carbon to the nitrogen, and then you're going to take the other hydrogen off the nitrogen as well and put a methyl group there, which is just shown by a stick coming off that nitrogen. Okay, and finally you also actually show this one hydrogen that comes off this carbon, just so that you can denote uh, the uh, optical isomerism of this. So basically the hydrogen is coming out of the page towards us and these other three bonds are going into the page um, um, away from us basically. So that we show this hydrogen just so that we can uh, convey the optical isomerism state. Okay, so this is the uh, structure of nicotine. Okay, and this is what uh, you inhale if you inhale cigarette smoke. Well, you inhale a lot more than nicotine, uh, a lot more worse chemicals than nicotine. But this is the chemical that's in cigarette smoke that is believed to be the, res uh, the addictive chemical which is in cigarette smoke, i.e. Uh, what makes people continue to smoke. Right, okay, so... Let's now talk about the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors because this molecule, nicotine, is basically an agonist at a huge number of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So, let's now talk about these nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Okay, right. So, whoops. Nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are often denoted N-A-C-H-R. 
and this is shorthand basically for nicotinic, the little m means nicotinic, the ACH means acetylcholine, and then the R means receptor. So this means nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, and let me now talk to you about the structure of these nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Okay, so if we look at one of these receptors in the plasma membrane of a cell, what you see is that it's basically made up of five separate protein subunits. So let me show these. So here is the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor here. Okay, a nice big protein sitting in the, um, in the plasma membrane. And it's going to be an ion channel. So when, uh, when it opens in response to the ligand binding, it's going to allow ions to move through it. So I'll draw it with a pore in the middle. And basically, this receptor is made up of a bunch of separate proteins. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. It's made up of five separate proteins all glued together. So basically, it's made up of five subunits. It's therefore a pentamer. Okay, right, so let's pull one of these individual subunits out and look at its membrane spanning topology. Okay, so we'll pull one of these subunits of the whole pentamer out and we'll look at its structure. Okay, so if we have the membrane here, then uh, the membrane spanning topology of the entire, uh, of, uh, sorry, of a single one of these receptor subunits here is as follows. So you have the amino terminus of the protein here. You then have what's known as a cis loop, which is just a loop like so in the polypeptide that is held together by a disulfide bond between uh, cysteine residues on the opposing two strands of the loop. Um, and that's known as a cis loop, therefore, because it's held together by disulfide bonds between cysteine amino acids. Then what happens is the polypeptide spans the membrane like so. It spans the membrane four times, okay, and then the carboxyl terminus of the protein is then finally on the extracellular aspect. Okay, so basically uh, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is an example of a cis loop ligand-gated ion channel, and ligand-gated ion channel is often abbreviated to LGIC for short. And all cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels are pentamers. Uh, so you have five of these uh, receptor subunits all pentamerized together. And each one of the subunits has the same membrane-spanning topology here, where it has the cis-loop extracellularly, and then it spans the membrane four times, uh, just like so. Okay, now nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are an example of cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels, but there are other examples, such as GABA-A receptors, um, what are the ones that we've got? 5-HT3 receptors, glycine receptors in the spinal cord, those are other examples of uh, cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors in the next video.